Welcome back for another educational webinar from Alpha Technologies. This time, we will join Rick as he explains the differences between Mooney viscometers. Today we will be discussing the multi-speed Mooney viscometer and the advantages it provides over the static unit, as well as the additional information this instrument can extract to improve a process. In rubber manufacturing, material processability is a key factor that compounders and process engineers must pay close attention to. Processability will determine how easily the material can flow and be used in a manufacturing process such as mixing or molding. Like the standard Mooney, the multi-speed Mooney viscometer measures the Mooney viscosity which directly correlates to processability of a material. However, instead of being limited to 2 RPM, the multi-speed Mooney is capable of rotating from 0.01 RPM to 20 RPM. This wider range of rotational speeds allows for valuable additional information to be collected. The Alpha Technologies Premier Series Mooney Viscometer picture here is capable of collecting data at 100 separate speeds during the same test. This dynamic test will provide extra information about the shear thickening and thinning of a material as well as molecular weight distribution and polymer chain branching. The Premier Series Mooney Viscometer adheres to two main American Society of Testing and Measurement standards, ASTM D1646 and D3346. ASTM D1646 covers the test methods for measuring Mooney viscosity, Mooney stress relaxation, and Mooney scorch. Mooney viscosity and stress relaxation are typically run on the polymer giving some insight into the polymer viscosity and elasticity. Mooney scorch is run on the compound compounded rubber providing information on the initial rate of cure and the amount of scorch safety time. This test is separated into three parts, the measurement of Mooney viscosity, stress relaxation, and pre-vulcanization characteristics. Each of the three measurements are recorded by a metal disc, embedded in a rubber specimen contained in a rigid cylinder maintained at specific pressure and temperature. For viscosity, the rotor is rotated during the test at a constant rotational speed and the resistance to movement is measured as a torque value to determine how much like a solid or a liquid the material will behave. For stress relaxation, at the end of a viscosity test, the rotation of the metal disc is suddenly stopped and the rate of decrease in torque is measured. This provides valuable information about the hysteresis the material will undergo as well as characterize both the elastic and viscous response of the material. For the third type of test, the viscosity of a pre-cross-linked rubber is recorded during heating at specified temperature. The minimum viscosity and the times for the viscosity to increase by specified amounts are used as an arbitrary measure of the start and rate of vulcani vulcanization. ASTM D3346 describes a Mooney test specifically designed for measuring the processability of emulsion rubbers. The procedure follows the Mooney viscosity test method found in ASTM D1646 Part A described above, however it simply deals with the emulsions instead of solid rubber. This leads to the question, why does it matter if a material is shear thinning or thickening? A thixotropic material undergoes shear thinning. This means that as the, rate, as the shear rate applied to the material increases, it will exhibit less viscous behavior. In many rubber applications, this is a desirable attribute for the, a material as processing and mixing can be done quicker and with, with less energy consumption. One example of this behavior is toothpaste, which will flow like a liquid when sheared, such as when you squeeze the tube to apply it to your toothbrush. The paste is able to flow like a liquid until it passes through the tube or will once again regain its solid-like structure since the shearing force is removed. In other applications, such as ballistic protective equipment, dilatant materials, or shear thickening materials are desirable. This is because when an extremely high shearing force is applied to the material, it will become more viscous and start behaving more like a solid at the location of the force. A familiar example of this is Kevlar protected Kevlar protection coated with STR, or shear thickening resin. The Kevlar is light and flexible, allowing the wearer unhindered mobility. However, when the Kevlar is subjected to an extreme shear rate, in this case a ballistic, the material will act as a solid at the point of contact and prevent the projectile from penetrating the material. When set in the context of a process design, you can see how it is important to know this type of information about a material. For example, if a shear thinning material were to be mixed at too high a rate, it could become difficult to mold or hold a structure. Or if a shear thickening material is mixed too aggressively, it could be extremely wasteful in terms of energy and even disrupt a process by becoming too viscous to flow properly. This concept of shear thickening and thinning is just one of several examples as to why it is so as why it's so useful to be able to test material at multiple speeds. Using the multi-speed Mooney, one can quantitatively determine a number of properties of a material with respect to three main categories. These include viscosity, scorch, and processability. 
which when controlled properly lead to increased production value. This is because knowing how your material will behave during a process allows you to determine the ideal operating parameters for critical process functions such as mixing, flow rates, and a number of others. Moving forward, we are going to break down how each of these three factors that can lead to increased production value and discuss how a multi-speed Mooney can play a pivotal role in this. Viscosity is a fluid property that indicates the resistance of a fluid to either stress or movement. More viscous materials will more strongly resist movement and will require more energy to flow or process. As mentioned earlier, different materials will have different viscous responses to various stimuli and it is an important property to monitor and control in a process. Viscosity can be mathematically defined as the shear stress over the change in shear rate. Shear stress can be simply defined as the force over the area while shear rate is the change in velocity with respect to the change in position. Scorch is how long a material can be processed until critical cross-linking occurs and the material can no longer flow or undergo plastic deformation. Scorch is another critical variable to monitor and control since it will determine the optimal temperature and maximum process time for your procedure. A typical Mooney viscometer test is ML1 plus 8, which will provide the torque response of a material as it cures for 8 minutes with a 1 minute preheat. Other important data points include T5, which is the amount of time it takes for the material to rise 5 Mooney units over its minimum torque. When this value is subtracted from T35, the result is the Mooney cure rate, which provides valuable information about how long a material will be able to be processed. In addition, T25 and T90 are important because they represent how the viscous the material is becoming as, it, as time goes on. T25 being the time it takes the material to reach 25% cure and T90 for 90%. T90 is often used instead of T100 because the material will continue to cure after being removed from the process because of internal heat retention. As a result, the cross-linking will continue to completion while the material is cooling, thus saving valuable time and energy allowing the process to become more efficient. Using information collected from a multi-speed Mooney viscometer about viscosity and scorch, it is then possible to begin to control the processability of said material. Knowing how long a material can cure and how rapidly it will in conjunction with its viscous response to shear, it is then possible to start setting controls on operating parameters such as mix speed, rotor orientation, flow rate, and temperature. Control over input variables such as these ensures minimal energy consumption and maximum productivity with as little waste as possible. In addition to process information, the multi-speed Mooney can also provide detailed information about molecular weight distribution and long chain branching. Pictured here, the slopes of the curves provided from a multi-speed Mooney give more information about molecular weight distribution and long chain branching. For example, the materials with the steeper slopes will typically be less branched with shorter branches. This is because as the shear rate increases, the polymer matrix will become less entangled and more uniform, being able to more easily slip over and under one another, resulting in a more flexible material. In conclusion, a multi-speed Mooney viscometer provides advantages over a static Mooney, allowing more information to be collected. This can predict material behavior at a wider variety of conditions. Lastly, this instrument may be applied for quality control of the rubber processing operation as well as research and development for the evaluation of new compounding formulations or process conditions. My name is Rick, an Applications Engineer with Alpha Technologies. Thank you for listening to my webinar and I hope you found some useful information to help improve your process or research. Thank you very much for joining us in today's webinar. Stay tuned for the next topic.